Welcome back to Chapter 9, Section 2, DNA Replication. By the end of this section, you will be able to explain the process of DNA replication, explain the importance of telomerase to DNA replication, describe mechanisms of DNA repair. When a cell divides, it is important that each daughter cell receives an identical copy of the DNA. This is accomplished by the process of DNA replication. The replication of DNA occurs during the synthesis phase, or S phase, of the cell cycle before the cell enters mitosis or meiosis. The elucidation of the structure of the double helix provided a hint as to how DNA is copied. Recall that adenine nucleotides pair with thymine nucleotides and cytosine with guanine. This means that the two strands are complementary to each other. For example, a strand of DNA with a nucleotide sequence of A, G, T, C, A, T, G, A will have a complementary strand with the sequence T, C, A, G, T, A, C, T, as depicted here. Because of the complementarity of the two strands, having one strand means that it is possible to recreate the other strand. This model for replication suggests that the two strands of the double helix separate during replication, and each strand serves as a template from which the new complementary strand is copied. During DNA replication, each of the two strands that make up the double helix serve as a template from which the new strands are copied. The new strand will be complementary to the parental or old strand. Each new double strand consists of one parental strand and one new daughter strand. This is known as semi-conservative replication. When two DNA copies are formed, they have an identical sequence of nucleotide bases and are divided equally into two daughter cells. DNA replication in eukaryotes. Because eukaryotic genomes are very complex, DNA replication is a very complicated process that involves several enzymes and other proteins. It occurs in three main stages, initiation, elongation, and termination. Recall that eukaryotic DNA is bound to proteins known as histones to form structures called nucleosomes. During initiation, the DNA is made accessible to the proteins and enzymes involved in the replication process. How does the replication machinery know where on the DNA double helix to begin? It turns out there are specific nucleotide sequences called origins of replication at which replication begins. Certain proteins bind the origin of replication while an enzyme called helicase unwinds and opens up the DNA helix. As the DNA opens up, Y-shaped structures called replication forks are formed. Overall, this is the replication bubble. Each end has a replication fork. Two replication forks are formed at the origin of replication, and these get extended in both directions as replication proceeds. There are multiple origins of replication on the eukaryotic chromosome, such that replication can occur simultaneously from several places in the genome. In humans, this works out to be about 30,000 to 50,000 origins of replication. During elongation, an enzyme called DNA polymerase adds DNA nucleotides to the three prime end of the template. Because DNA polymerase can only add new nucleotides at the end of the backbone, a primer sequence, which provides this starting point, is added with complementary RNA nucleotides. This primer is removed later and the nucleotides are replaced with DNA nucleotides. One strand, which is complementary to the parental DNA strand, is synthesized continuously towards the replication fork so the polymerase can add nucleotides in this direction. This continuously synthesized strand is known as the leading strand because DNA polymerase can only synthesize DNA in the 5' to 3' direction, the other new strand is put together in short pieces called Okazaki fragments. 
The Okazaki fragments each require a primer made of RNA to start the synthesis. The strand with the Okazaki fragments is known as the lagging strand. As synthesis proceeds, an enzyme removes the RNA primer, which is then replaced with DNA nucleotides, and the gaps between fragments are sealed by an enzyme called DNA ligase. The process of DNA replication can be summarized as follows. One, DNA unwinds at the origin of replication. Two, new bases are added to the complementary parental strands. One new strand is made continuously while the other strand is made in pieces. Three, primers are removed, new DNA nucleotides are put in place of the primers, and the backbone is sealed by DNA ligase. Telomere replication. Because eukaryotic chromosomes are linear, DNA replication comes to the end of a line in eukaryotic chromosomes. As you have learned, the DNA polymerase enzyme can add nucleotides in only one direction. In the leading strand, synthesis continues until the end of the chromosome is reached. However, on the lagging strand, there is no place for a primer to be made for the DNA fragment to be copied at the end of the chromosome. This presents a problem for the cell because the ends remain unpaired, and over time these ends get progressively shorter as cells continue to divide. The ends of the linear chromosomes are known as telomeres and have repetitive sequences that do not code for a particular gene. As a consequence, it is telomeres that are shortened with each round of DNA replication instead of genes. For example, in humans, a six base pair sequence, TTAGGG, is repeated 100 to 1000 times. The discovery of the enzyme telomerase, or telomerase, I think I like telomerase better, helped in the understanding of how chromosome ends are maintained. The telomerase attaches to the end of the chromosome and complementary bases to the RNA template are added on the end of the DNA strand. Once the lagging strand template is sufficiently elongated, DNA polymerase can now add nucleotides that are complementary to the ends of the chromosomes. Thus, the ends of the chromosomes are replicated. Telomerase is typically found to be active in germ cells, adult stem cells, and some cancer cells. For her discovery of telomerase and its action, Elizabeth Blackburn, pictured here, received the Nobel Prize for Medicine and Physiology in 2009. Telomerase is not active in adult somatic cells. Adult somatic cells that undergo cell division continue to have their telomeres shortened. This essentially means that telomere shortening is associated with aging. In 2010, scientists found that telomerase can reverse some age-related conditions in mice, and this may have potential in regenerative medicine. Telomerase-deficient mice were used in these studies. These mice have tissue atrophy, stem cell depletion, organ system failure, and impaired tissue injury response. Telomerase reactivation in these mice caused extension of telomeres, reduced DNA damage, reversed neurodegeneration, and improved functioning of the testes, spleen, and intestines. Thus, telomere reactivation may have potential for treating age-related diseases in humans. DNA replication in prokaryotes. Recall that the prokaryotic chromosome is a circular molecule with a less extensive coiling structure than eukaryotic chromosomes. The eukaryotic chromosome is linear and highly coiled around proteins. While there are many similarities in the DNA replication process, these structural differences necessitate some differences in the DNA replication process in these two life forms. DNA replication has been extremely well studied in prokaryotes, primarily because of the small size of the genome and the large number of variants available. Escherichia coli has 4.6 million base pairs in a single circular chromosome, and all of it gets replicated in approximately 42 minutes, starting from a single origin of replication and proceeding around the chromosome in both directions. This means that approximately 1,000 nucleotides are added per second. The process is much more rapid than in eukaryotes. 
This table summarizes the differences between prokaryotic and eukaryotic replication. DNA repair. DNA polymerase can make mistakes while adding nucleotides. It edits the DNA by proofreading every newly added base. Incorrect bases are removed and replaced by the correct base and then polymerization continues. Most mistakes are corrected during replication, although when this does not happen the mismatch repair mechanism is employed. Mismatch repair enzymes recognize the wrongly incorporated base and excise it from the DNA replacing it with the correct base. In yet another type of repair, nucleotide excision repair, the DNA double strand is unwound and separated, the incorrect bases are removed along with a few bases on the 5' and 3' end, and these are replaced by copying the template with the help of DNA polymerase. Nucleotide excision repair is particularly important in correcting thymine dimers which are primarily caused by ultraviolet light. In a thymine dimer, two thymine nucleotides adjacent to each other on one strand are covalently bonded to each other rather than their complementary bases. If the dimer is not removed and repaired, it will lead to a mutation. Individuals with flaws in their nucleotide excision repair genes show extreme sensitivity to sunlight and develop skin cancer early in life. Most mistakes are corrected. If they are not, they may result in a mutation, defined as a permanent change in the DNA sequence. Mutations in repair genes may lead to serious consequences like cancer. And on that note, we come to the end of Section 2, DNA Replication. Join me next time for Section 3, Transcription.